K Infosys provides world class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Basically, needs your need your JDBC, ODBC, Bridge Driver. Okay, we'll see the architecture also uh, in the next in the upcoming slides. Now uh, we have got the Type Three driver. Uh, that is a JDBC Net Pure Java drive. Uh, use standard network uh, socket to communicate. Now, whenever you talk about your uh, type three drivers, okay, uh, we will basically have, uh, when we talk about your servers and stuff and all, therein we will try to configure these things. We'll make some uh, some arrangement in order to talk, to talk to those things, okay? At this point of time, just uh, remember that you have got a type three driver, which you basically access to the database using some kind of servers, okay? Now, this is the most important in which uh, you will be doing all the things uh, in most of the uh, most of the companies they always use your uh, thin driver itself so that is a pure java drive a pure java based drive that communicates directly okay so when we talk about your type 4 driver it directly communicates there is no layer in between uh, your java application to your database okay so let us see one by one couple of things uh, Okay. So this is a type one driver. If you can see the type one driver, uh, you have got uh, the Java application. You have got a bunch of uh, JDBC APIs, and you have got your JDBC driver manager, and then you have got your JDBC ODBC bridge driver. Okay, uh, and you have got your uh, ODBC driver. So uh, when you talk about this, uh, the one which we have seen right now, okay, your data source, and then from your JDBC uh, ODBC drivers, you are going to have they are going to have some uh, database library APIs from where they are going to connect to the database. Okay, so there are a lot of layers in between connecting to the database to your Java Java API. Okay, um, Jairam, one quick yeah. question. Yep. Uh, so every vendor, uh, database server vendor, will provide a, a type four JDBC drivers. Uh, yes, you will be having for every vendor, they will be having their own specific uh, drivers. Okay. Type 4 driver. Yes, type 4 drivers. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll see that because when we are going to use a bunch of uh, APIs right now, depending on uh, the particular, uh, uh, particular databases. Now, when you talk about JDBC native API, uh, you basically uh, remove one layer out of it. Okay, if you see this, uh, you have got a database library APS, which is again specific to your database itself. Okay, and here in this case, you, if I just expand this particular diagram, okay, so here in this case, you have your JDBC driver manager. Uh, here also, you have your JDBC driver manager, and which layer we are basically removing it. If you see here, uh, uh, we do not have this JDBC ODBC bridge driver. Okay. Now here in this case, uh, we are having some native API driver. So when you talk about native API driver, this native API drivers are which a bit more faster when you use your JDBC ODBC uh, bridge drivers. Okay. And uh, the third type of drivers, uh, The third type of driver, uh, it's it's a three tier uh, approach. So when you talk about a three tier approach, you basically have the particular driver somewhere installed in your or somewhere running in your somewhere in your uh, in your server. Okay. So when we talk about server, it is it can it is uh, any kind of application server. So when you talk about application server, we have WebLogic, we have got WebSphere, and we have got JBoss. So there are a lot of different application servers in the market. We'll see what is an application server also. Even though you do not understand, it's okay, not a problem. Okay. 
Now, uh, here in this case, basically you make a Java AP, uh, Java, uh, calling Java application. You've got a JDBC APS. Every time you'll be using JDBC API and you have got a JDBC driver manager also. Okay. So here you'll be having your, some kind of network uh, protocol driver wherein with the help of your JDBC uh, with, from your application, you will just have uh, a connectivity to the particular server. From the server, you have different databases. So what all databases you want? Every connection you are supposed to have it using some layer out here. Okay, so here you have got your uh, application server. From the application server, you can hit different databases. Now, even in your application, you still have an option that you can uh, hit Oracle database. You can, if you want to hit MySQL database, you want to hit DB2 database. So those things you can very well do it from your using your type three approach. Okay. Now, this is what we are going to see in this uh, entire session uh, in a type four driver, a pure Java based driver that communicates directly with the vendors database uh, through some socket connection. Okay. This is the highest performance driver available for the database and is usually provided by the vendor itself. All right. Uh, this kind of driver is extremely flexible. You don't need to install specific software on the client or the server. Okay. So further, uh, these drivers can be downloaded uh, dynamically. So here, if you can see, you've got uh, the uh, Java APS and then you've got your native protocol drivers and those drivers you will be using it in order to talk to the database. Okay. So this particular driver will be given by each and every vendors again. Okay. So when, when I talk about vendors, yeah, there is a question. What is a vendor? Uh, see, uh, my, uh, my SQL, it was initially from, not from Oracle. Now, when you, when I talk about DB2, DB2 is being uh, given by your, uh, IBM folks. Okay. Uh, and then when, when I talk about your Oracle, Oracle, uh, database is given by the Oracle folks itself. Okay. So every, uh, when, when I talk about vendor, uh, if Oracle is developing its own database, so they are the, they are the vendor. Okay. So when I say vendor specific drivers, that means Oracle specific drivers. Uh, when I talk about DB2 drivers, I, I need to talk about a DB2. I mean, I, who should give you a driver? IBM folks has to give you some APIs, which can basically talk to the, talk to their own system. Okay. Um, Okay. Now it's a, it, it is very simple, right? I mean, uh, when, when there is any kind of international meet, uh, within the, uh, within the community, within the whole world, if suppose, uh, you do not have, uh, I mean, uh, a person who's coming from Uganda, he doesn't know English or he doesn't know Hindi properly. Right? So it, I need some kind of communicator who can communicate to that particular person. So the communicator, he should basically understand both the things, right? So, it's the community, it's the responsibility of the communicator to talk to the database or talk to the specific person who basically talks something. Okay. So here, uh, whenever I talk about, uh, any kind of database, I need to have their database specific drivers. Okay. Uh, so which driver you should be using basically, uh, if you are accessing uh, one type of database such as Oracle, Sybase or IBM, the preferred driver is your type four driver. Okay. If your Java application is accessing multiple type of databases, as I said, if you see your type uh, three, this is, this could be different databases. Okay. So always try to prefer using your type three drivers. Type two drivers are use, uh, useful in situation where type, uh, where a type three or a type four driver is not available yet for your database. So this is, it was initially it was there, but uh, these days uh, you have all your type four drivers always. Okay. Now the type one driver is not considered a uh, is not considered a deployment level driver and is typically used for development and testing purpose only. Okay. It is very much local to your machine, even though, uh, these days, uh, no one uses this also. Okay. Now, again, if you want to use your uh, type one driver, if you have your uh, MS access, if you know that in your MS access, also, you can create your own database. Okay. If you want to access your MS access using some kind of query, you can still use your type one drivers. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's, let's talk about what all steps you can basically take, uh, take in order to have a J, uh, database connections. Okay. Now, even before that, uh, I believe, uh, I, I won't be able to, uh, cover up all the things in the span of 15 minutes right now. So even before that, uh, let me do one thing. Let me give some miscellaneous uh, stuff to you right now so that we will be using the, that particular miscellaneous stuff in your next programs. Okay. 
so i'm just stopping out here and 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 i'm not uh, talking anything about a database right now okay so till now we have only spoken about the concepts of your database okay so just remember we have got four kind of drivers and we can use any kind of drivers depending on the uh, depending on the flexibility of uh, our system okay now for all right now what i was uh, what i was supposed to say you here is uh, in the entire course right now when we spoke about the entire core java courses we always uh, used your system.out.println okay guys uh, your database connectivity uh, the this session has been closed okay so i'm talking something else now the reason because i do not have much time right now it will take at least uh, more half an hour how to explain you things all right um till now we were basically talking about uh, the the sops always we were using sops okay now let me go to the actual program let me delete this okay so here in this case basically uh, whenever you want to do some sops or some, some want to print something you um no not even this is not a good example Sorry, folks. Sometimes I get uh, run out of examples from my mind. All right. So here, uh, this is a calculation uh, class. In the calculation class, you know that you are basically saying add value. Okay. Now let's say you. Where is that add value? Okay. Calculate, and then from here. Say add dot add value, right? So you pass on some values out here, so that you can add it. Now this add value, if you see, I think it has got a return type. Yes. So this return type, whenever uh, so your main objective is call this method and let's say int uh, int value equals to so and so. And your main objective is from wherever you call, you just capture this value, and you want to do some other uh, manipulation with that. Okay, so you say int uh, final value equals to the value plus 10. Okay, so you just say sys out. So basically, you don't know uh, you want to do some sys out. Yes, you can do it. So you just say uh, final value equals to final value. Okay. Uh, now, uh, what happens is you do not know. I mean, you are giving the value to all and to all. You are not at all getting the value as 24 here, right? Something is wrong out here. So what you do is you very well go here to this API. This is a very small API. Usually, when you talk about the APIs, there'll be lot of uh, other function calls, lot of other uh, band, uh, other uh, functionalities, uh, and lot more. Okay, it's not a single line of code basically. Okay, you might be having around 200 or 300 lines of code. Or maybe less or more than that. Okay. So in order to debug your program, what you do is you just uh, say system dot order println in real time. Okay. So you say uh, a equals to a, right? So you are only concerned about a whether the value of a is getting passed properly or not. Okay. So you do this. I mean, you no doubt you do right click run as Java application. You run this program and you see that uh, the a equals to 12 here. So I'm good right now. But sometimes it is not proper. So for that reason, I added a SOP out here so that even before coming to be before uh, returning my actual value, I'm just printing that uh, value out here so that I can see and uh, I can make sure that oh, everything is fine. Okay. But usually what happens uh, in real production, whenever you deploy this particular complete application, if I want to deploy this application in the real, uh, real server, I do not want this print, right? I do not want this SOP because Remember one thing, whenever you use a system.out.println, it is a uh, costly operation because when you say system.out, it is going to basically open up a connection okay, to the console and then it is going to print something. Okay, So using that basically will have some per, some per performance hit. Okay? So what you do is you down the line, you go and comment it. Right. So before even deploying your application to the production environment, you go and comment it. Right. So right now, run right run as Java application. You're good here. You're not even getting this. 
okay sometime during a development time again you are invoking this or again you are enabling this so right click run as job application so how many times i mean before even deploying let's say there is one more functionality a equals to 10 right so this is a genuine functionality you are saying a equals to a plus 10 this is genuine functionality somehow while uh, while commenting this you even commented this out and you deployed that in the production okay you are gone i mean your the complete uh, uh, logic is out of order i mean you you do not know what's wrong now again what you do you see okay there is an issue you again rebuild your entire code okay so usually whenever you do any changes you basically rebuild the entire code okay and then you make it as a jar and then you again dump it to a server or to the production environment okay uh so it's it's, it's a tedious job uh, because doing a silly mistake out here it screwed up my uh, whole production and uh, i again took a complete uh, day in order to uh, do this complete functionality okay so this is not happening for me so this is also not happening for me so in this, that case what are we going to do is we are going to use some kind of logger uh, framework with the help of that uh, what we are going to do is we are uh, going to use that logger framework in order to log the application okay so here in this case uh, if you see the jdbc program okay uh, we'll be using some kind of classes here that is your uh, log uh, your logger class here and from the logger class we'll be saying something like logger.getlogger and in you ultimately what we are going to do is we are just going to use this particular logger okay to print the output to the console or to the file system okay so this is nothing but a logger framework uh, which again i'm going to execute uh, sometime by tomorrow probably okay and uh, i will show you what all things we can do it using your loggers okay i think we still have time hang on yeah uh, we, i think uh, we can just cover up within this 10 minutes of time so what am i going to do here is uh, let me just take a small example out here so right click new class logger example finish okay now just see what all things i need in order to work on uh, this particular logger functionality the very first thing is i need to have this okay so let me copy this and push it out here okay and instead of having my jdbc program i just need to have logger example out here Okay. now the next uh, the second thing is i need some classes which is related to your logger out here and in this entire application i do not have anything which i can use it okay i'm not going to use all this logging things i'll be using a third party uh, jar file that is your log4j okay so log4j you can very well uh, do one thing you can just go to your uh, internet and just say uh, log4j uh, jar maven so just type in maven here and you can basically get this log 4j somewhere you can just download this okay so just download this keep it show in folder so copy this i just copied it from xyz location and come to your this place so let me for the, for the time being let me create a new folder here so i just created a folder saying the library So I'm just going to dump this the the jar file which I downloaded. So I have got log4j 1.2.15 dot jar file in my machine right now. Okay. Now, in order to make sure that this particular logger is in the class path, I have already added this jar file in my uh, in my module. I have to set it in the class path. So in order to make sure that I, it is compiled compilation free, right click here. to the to the module on which you are running your program and go to the properties and uh, go to java build path in your java build path go to the project sorry go to the libraries and say add jars okay so add jars if if it is somewhere in your c drive or d drive you can even say add external jars so i have already copied this library in your uh, in your uh, in this particular module itself so i'm just saying add jars just expand all this thing and just click on this and just say okay and just say okay all right now if you see uh i just say control shift oh 
Now I have basically imported that particular logger. Okay. Now if you if I open this control shift T, I can see where this is present. It is somewhere present in my log 4j 1.2.15.jar file. Okay. Now whenever we want to open a type of a class, you can say control shift T. Okay. Control shift R will not work here. Okay. If I say logger, logger will not work here. Okay. In order to uh, make sure uh, to search a particular type, you just say control shift T and search this. Okay. So if I choose this, you can see the in which particular uh, jar file it is present out here. Okay, so this is just a trick here. Now I'm I'm happy here. Uh, now apart from this, I need one more XML file or a property file. So we'll talk about an XML file here. Let me just copy and paste it. You can even get it from the internet also, but I will just copy and paste it from an existing location. Okay. So paste it out here. So the XML is nothing but here log4j.xml file. Right now, if you see here, uh, there are a couple of uh, uh, let me remove this. Okay, so there are a couple of uh, elements out here. Uh, this is kind of a pattern which you want to print it. I'll just show you right away. And uh, let me first put this as a console and a log also. Okay, so let me just use this. Let I just say log dot uh, debug I just give some message uh, hello logger right so instead of SOPs I'm just going to use a, a logger here and if you see here logger is uh, it is already establishing a connection and it uh, you don't have to every time open and close a connection here okay so this is moreover it is a static okay so whenever it is a static it is accessible by each and every class you just create this particular object only one time okay so if you see uh, once I run this application right click run as Java application cancel uh, a vast virus database has been updated okay so right click run as Java application okay you got something like uh, hello logger that's what I printed but apart from that I've got some pattern out here Okay, what is that pattern? The same pattern you see it out here. Okay, so I say a console. So when I talk about console here, there are different appenders. Okay, we'll see it one by one as well. In the all advanced courses also, we'll be using the block 4 j properties itself. Now, when I talk about console here, uh, you see you see console appender. This is the class which is again in your uh, log 4 j itself. Now you give this pattern out here. Okay, so this is the date and this is your timestamp. And then uh, this you are saying uh, if you see something like your uh, this is your main. Okay. And there are different patterns out here. Okay, so you say what what uh, what type it is over here, whether it's a debug type or what kind of type out here. Okay, and then uh, what is the class? What is the? Uh, I think this is the method here. Yeah. Okay, so these informations you can basically put that in the pattern also. Okay, so if you still want to learn something about it, you can very well go and learn the patterns also. Okay. Now here uh, there are two things. One is your file appender. One is your console appender. Now. I have run this program and even I should have a log file also. Now, what is the log file here? The log file will be created somewhere in here. Logs JDBC issue. So let me just refresh this. Okay. Now if when I refresh this, you see one log folder got created and something like log issue, sorry, JDBC issue dot log file got created out here. And in that, the one which I actually printed in the console, the same thing is being appended to a log file also okay now if I run the same application again logger example so if I say here uh, hello logger again right click run as Java application now no doubt your when you ran this application it printed again hello logger hello logger again but the previous uh, hello logger was was gone right so if you see you see this pattern out here right let us go back to the logger file here the output file on which we have told what your log file that is your appender okay in which particular uh, file you want to append the logs which you are generating newly okay again the same same file out here okay so the param uh, file name is so and so so let us go here refresh this open this now you see the previous logs you see that what timestamp that particular log has been printed and even you see the latest timestamps also. Okay. Now, if you see here, uh, this is, uh, where is that? 
Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. So if you see here, even the previous logs as well as the new logs has been printed. Now, when you use a file appender, if you if I keep it as it is now, and if I open, if I run the same application tomorrow, okay, what is going to happen is it is going to create a new log file for me. In even it is not going to touch this file. It is going to create a new log file. It is going to keep the old log file as it is. Okay. Now, what are the other advantages? Now, as I said, uh, when I talk about your logger example, here today I am just logging this uh, this stuff only for my debugging. Okay. Because as I said in the previous example, I just wanted to give an SOP out there and just need to say that. Okay, I just want to print this, but do you, in my production, I want to comment that out. Okay, so here I just say uh, log dot uh, info. Okay, so I just say this is just for information. Okay, now whenever you say debug, that means you use this debug uh, using only for your development time. Okay. Now you don't want, you want info. Info is very important because uh, in your application, whenever you're running some application, you want to give some information to be put that in the uh, in the console or in the log file. Okay, so if I run this application, right click run as Java application, it will give you what level it is. Okay, what type, whether it is an info, whether it is a debug or whether it is a different kind of loggers also. Okay, logger levels. Now, if you just go back to your log file, you see uh, this info got printed out here. Okay, now down the line, uh, some point I do not want this debug point whenever I'm uh, deploying this application in the production. Okay, now what am I going to do is instead of having a debug, I just say info. I'm not touching any of my application. I'm not commenting out anything or I'm not doing anything. Okay, now let us see what is going to happen. Right click run as Java application. Only your info level logs are getting printed. Even in the console also in, in your log, uh, logger file also. Okay, you see only your info level is getting printed. There is no trace of your debug here. Okay, now if you enable your uh, debug level, see if you enable your info level, your debug level is not getting printed. But if you enable your debug level and run the same application, right click run as Java application, both your debug as well as info is getting printed. Uh, printed. Okay, so when you have a debug, debug. Uh, has got higher precedence so when you have debug all the under all the logger level under debug will get printed now if you see the levels out here uh, this is in, uh, in in sequence when you have uh, debug defined under debug you have got info so anywhere you have something like info you, this will be printed uh, usually whenever you talk about uh, uh, catch block okay you say something like logger dot error okay so whenever you see in your catch block you will always say something like logger dot error this is error so error whenever any of the level if you see here in case uh, i have got my info level or debug level enabled in that case my error or fatal or warning anything will be printed okay so on the top you just want to trace something you just say trace so everything will be enabled okay the least is your this one so this will be always enabled if you enable any of these levels okay so these things we are going to use it uh, in 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 our application and it is very important concept because from now on uh, just keep thinking about this that there is a logger framework with the help of the logger framework you basically log your information either to the console or either to the to your output file now this output file, you just keep this so that down the line, if you want to debug your application, you can very well go and debug your application. Or you want to see what all things has been printed in your logs, you can very well go and see that. Okay. So this is only just for information. Uh, I mean this log file. So this log file, you can keep it. You can still keep uh, all trace of log file today. What log has been generated tomorrow? What log has been generated, right? So when you talk about banking application or any kind of application, all the application will be having its having its own logger files. Okay. So we're going to uh, leave the session out here. Uh, tomorrow we are going to talk about the JDBC programs and see how to uh, write the program and how to execute the programs. Okay. Uh, Jairam, uh, yes. does it print the line number? It does not print the line number. No, it does not print the line number. I see.
All right, uh, folks. If there are no questions, then Jiram, uh, can we? Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Hey, Jiram. Uh, can we move it to uh, the log files to uh, some drive? And uh, what changes do we need to do into log four J uh, to make to take the log files to the C drive or D drive? Uh, you can basically specify the complete path out here. So this is the path in which you can specify it. Okay. Or uh, there might be some other uh, parameters also which I haven't explored much. But as you see, if I let's say if I say uh, I think I've done this, but again, let me just show you that. Mm, okay, I have my D drive out here. So I just want to specify the D drive. In D drive somewhere, uh, okay, I just specify the D out here. So D column. Okay, so let us see. Uh, right click, run as Java application. Okay, let me go back to the D drive. And refresh this. Yeah, you got this out here. Okay, so you can specify any drive. So this is your uh, relative path. If you specify a relative path uh, on which particular program you, you project you're running, and that particular stuff, you can generate the same thing. Okay, but in your real time, yes, you specify the complete server information on where you want to uh, specify your. Uh, I mean, your your particular complete path wherein you want to put this output. Okay. Did that uh, clear a question? Uh, Jeram, I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in real time, like which method we use the the logger or debug or the log dot info? We use info. Okay. You will be having a lot of debuggers. I mean, you will be having in a lot of places because during development time, what you do is you have debuggers here, there because you. I mean, it's your it's your development environment, right? So you keep on putting all debug levels. Okay. But you don't want to print all this debug label. Let's say, for example, I have a, I've got a, a for loop out here. So for you've got some uh, collections, you got it from the database, and you are basically saying for int uh, i equals to zero, i less than uh, uh, let's say ten. So let's say fifty, okay, and i plus plus, okay. So you are getting all these informations, right? Now you will, uh, what you do is in order to get this information of each and every element from the collection, you will just say log dot debug. This is only for your debugging purpose, but this is not at all important for me whenever I really would deploy this application to my production servers. Okay. This is only for my own sake for only for the development sake. I don't want to enable this particular logger, which is already there in the for loop because if I enable this unnecessarily, I'm going to print a lot of junk data to the logger. Okay, so I don't even do that. So always you use your info level logs. And if you see your build team or your, your configuration guys, they will be always having your info level itself. Okay. But again, let's say in your production uh, production system, you 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 are into real trouble and some of your applications are not working. And what you do is you basically go and request to the configuration team that please enable my uh, debug level log so that I can debug my application for at least one hour or two. And then you can again switch it back to your info level. Okay. So that option is also present here. But when you use your system.autoprintlen, you cannot do those things as well. Okay. Uh, there was a question or where will that be available? What does that mean, uh, Pratima? Uh, I'll send you that PPT. I'll send it. I'll send it to the uh, admin folks. They will send it back to you. Okay. All right, folks. Uh, I'm going to check in this file, uh, and you guys can check out. Uh, probably it is not going to be under your core Java. It'll be. Uh, I'll I'll let you know tomorrow. Okay. So I'll give give all these informations tomorrow. All right, folks. So if there are no questions, then we can just wind up and. Uh,